P-O-S-T. P-O-S-T. Post, the serials you like the most, brings you the Roy Rogers Show, starring the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. It's roundup time on the double R bar. So saddle your horse, cause we're gonna ride far. The double R bar ranch transcribes stories and songs of the real West with the Whippoorwills. The wisest trail scout of them all, Jonah Wilde, played by Forrest Lewis. The Queen of the West, Dale Evans. And in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. Have you started the new year out right, buckaroos? If not, there's still time. Get your mom to put post cereals on the shelf where they're real handy. Post cereals are good, you know. You can always count on anything bearing the brand name Post. Well, sir, Jonah and I are just about to leave the ranch and ride for town. Dale sent us word that the sheriff's a little mystified about something, and we sure don't want to see that happen. What's this, a citizen's delegation? Oh, we heard about a telegram you got, Sheriff, an important telegram. Thought we'd come in and ask about it. Uh, the uh, telegram's nothing that's liable to interrupt the peaceful tenure of our ways, as the saying goes, is it? Do any of you fellas remember a man named Andy Sales? Supposed to have been around here years ago? Uh, yeah, Sheriff, we remember Andy. Telegram about him? It's from him. Oh, then he ain't dead. I'll read what he says. Sheriff of Paradise Valley, Mineral City. Have been fugitive from law of your state for 12 years on charges of highway robbery. Wish to pay my debt and make peace. Will surrender if you make arrangements for me to come to Mineral City. Sincerely, Andy Sales. <laughs> well, you're not paying any attention to it, are you, Sheriff? After all these years? Well, Andy must be an old man. He's probably local. Just imagines he was wanted. The record shows different. He's wanted for 20-odd robberies. He was the leader of a gang of highwaymen. Uh, well, I... Uh, good luck, Sheriff. I guess I'd better be moving along. Yeah, me too. I'll go with you, Jim. Well, what's the matter here? All of you in a hurry? I got work to do, Sheriff. Everybody's got work to do, that's all. The men leave the sheriff's office, break up, and go off in various directions, only to meet a few minutes later beyond the edge of town as though by prearrangement. Milt, what are we going to do? We can't let Andy come back. No matter what steps we have to take to stop it. Don't you agree? Before you all make up your minds, remember Milt said, no matter what steps we have to take, you still agree? Yes, of course they agree. They have to. We're all in the same boat. If Andy surrenders, he's bound to tell who was in the gang with him. And we're ranch owners now. We're prosperous men. Take it easy, Milt. I will well, we can save ourselves if we see that Andy doesn't have a chance to meet with the law. Jim, you glue yourself to the sheriff. Ask questions, listen to his talk, read his mail if you have to. But find out when Andy is coming in and how he'll get here. I know, Jim. Andy Sales isn't far away. Just across the state line at Plano. Plano, eh? You're figuring on going after him yourself, I suppose. No, I'll just send a deputy. Sales has volunteered to come, so there won't be any trouble. Well, when is the deputy leaving? Do you know yet? In the morning. That soon. How is he traveling? By horse Excuse or... Excuse me, Jim. I'm stopping off here at the Eureka. I haven't had my dinner yet. See you later. Well, howdy, Sheriff. Uh, howdy, Dale. Hey, Boy, you, you look pretty good for a man who's supposed to be mystified. Mystified? Howdy, General's boy. Howdy, Tin Star. Who said I was mystified? Well, I guess I used that word when I told Roy about Andy Sales wanting to give himself up. The wrong word. I'm not mystified. I'm worried. There's too much talk, too much interest in Andy Sales. Well, now, I don't suppose there's any use trying to tell you about a feller I know who worried. Absorbing Amish. I'm beginning to suspect there's people who don't want Andy to come back. Well, do you think there's any danger of him trying to stop him? That's exactly what I mean. 
Mm. Absorbing Amos absorbed heat. We used to cook our potatoes on him. Oh, Jonah, my goodness. Well, we did, Dale. Left him out in the sun all day, and by night he'd absorbed enough heat oh. to be able... Dale said Andy Sales is in Plano. Mm. Uh, Ruth Davis has an old stagecoach over there that she's been wanting to give to Paradise Valley Museum. Uh, maybe this would be a good time to have it driven over. I think you've got something, Roy. Nobody would look for him in an old stagecoach. And we'd ride along to see that nothing did happen, wouldn't we, Roy? Why, yes, we could. Uh, come to think of it, I believe we should. Jim, Jim, is Jim Mitchell in here? Right here. Uh, oh. What's the matter, Mill? I thought you were supposed to ride herd on the sheriff. I have been until a few minutes ago. He gave me the brush. Went to eat his dinner at Dale Evans' place. Yeah. Well, it just happened that one of the boys had a back table at the Eureka when he walked in and found out something. Huh? The sheriff is sending Roy Rogers for Andy. What? He told me he was sending a deputy. All right. They changed their plans. He's suspicious. Roy is going. Then we really got to work fast. Yeah, we will. I've got a plan all thought out. Andy Sales will never get back to Mineral City. And maybe Roy Rogers won't either. The so-called respectable ranchers plot the death of Andy Sales, then start putting their plans into action. Roy, Deal, and Jonah leave for Plano, and by riding hard, arrive there the next afternoon. They have a talk with Ruth Davis first, and find she's more than willing to let the stagecoach go to the museum. Then they hire a driver they can trust. All arrangements are made by nightfall. And shortly after 8.30, Roy, Dale, and Jonah are in a little shack on the outskirts of town with Andy Sales. The stage is pulling up outside, Roy. All right. Andy, if you're ready, we'll get started. At night? Uh, going to start out at night? Well, now, surprise moves against the enemy is always made at night. Why, when I was in the army... Here we are. <clears throat> Getting so I can't even pass the time of day. I may quit. Why, look at the stagecoach. Regular museum piece. Yes, sir. Andy, there's talk that some of the folks don't want you to get back to Mineral City. We figure you'd be safe in traveling this way. You don't want me to get back, huh? <laughs> I spent a good part of my life here, and I'd be caught in half to go back. Now I don't want to go. I'd have to be afraid all over again. Yeah, now don't you get to worrying, Sales, or you'll wind up like absorbing Amos did. <clears throat> Would you like to hear what happened to him? We're all set to ride, John. Probably won't get a chance to tell it. This is the first time I've ever been in one of these on an open road. Trigger fella, you follow us, will you? And doggies, I'll try once more. Well, like I said, Absorbing Amos was a worrier, mostly about his lady friend, Ivy. Uh, Jonah, you better keep a tight upper lip until we're out of town. Oh, sure. I don't expect trouble, but we want to be ready in case it comes. The stagecoach rolls through town and onto the open road. The air is clean, the night is peaceful, and the only thing that mars the enjoyment of the ride is the thought of the little old man whose past life is to make his last days so tragic. The coach speeds through the open valley, then enters the mountain area. Here it must go more slowly. Still, there is no trouble. The passengers relax. The coach begins traveling toward the highest point in the road. The coach drags heavily on the horses. Their gait is reduced to a walk. Well, sir, like I say, there weren't no cure for it. No, every time absorbing Amos got out into the sun, he absorbed heat. Well, one time Amos and me was invited to dinner at the home of some civilians. And that was a very odd thing by itself in them days. Had a long ride through the hot sun to where them civilians lived. Well, sir, we went into the house determined to be on our best behavior. And what do you think happened? I say, what do you think happened? Absorbing Amos leaned back in one of their good chairs, and the thing busted right into flames. Why, oh, Jonah, Jonah Wild. Yes, sir, and civilian morale went way down. We tried to cheer Amos oh. up the next day while we was barbecuing a deer oh, over him. Uh, just a small deer, but he was worried. Anybody could see that. What's the matter, Roy? Well, the stagecoach is stopping. Oh, just arrest the horses, probably. After this, he'll... Oh, oh. Move. You're covered from both sides. <laughs> As the coach stops, the doors on both sides are flung open. Two masked men, guns in hand, start inside. All right, up with those hands. What is this? Close your door, Dick. Never get to finish nothing. Sales, you sit over in front of me. I want this seat. All right, Stan. Pull your freight. Uh, Rogers, 
We're here to see that Andy Sales doesn't get back. And let me warn you, if there's any interference, you won't get back either. The stagecoach rolls through the mountain area, down toward the wastelands below. Two masked men keep guns trained on the passengers. An unknown driver sits on the box, urging the horses forward. There is little conversation until the old man himself speaks. I wonder if I could say something. Sure you can, Andy. Not to you, Roy. To these others. We're listening. You haven't anything against Roy Rogers and his friends. So why don't you let them out and just take me? Now, wait a minute. Uh, They'd be a long time getting back to where they could make a report. And they couldn't report much. They don't know who you are. Roy's fist catches one of the guards on the jaw. He's been waiting for someone to divert their attention. Come on, Jonah, let's take it. Jonah lunges toward the other guard as Roy smashes the first one again. The guards, both of them, crumple, fall to the floor. I waited a long time for that. Yeah, let's rip these masks off and see who they are. I thought I recognized one voice, but I... Yes, sir, this one, Roy, Milt Keebler. And here's Dick Wiley. Both of them the kind of ranchers that do nothing for their community. Get up here on this seat. All right, you won't have the advantage long, Rogers. We're heading toward Lonesome Canyon. Is that where you fellas meant to do your shooting? Uh, we'll still do it. You can't stop the coach. There's more of our men waiting in the canyon. Dale, Jonah, watch these rattlers. I'm going up and knock that driver off his box. Maybe I can stop this coach. It won't do you any good now. You're too close to the canyon. Maybe so, Keebler, but I can sure try. <laughs> Say, if you Roy Rogers fans could visit the cookhouse at the Double R Bar Ranch, you know what you'd find? Stacks of that exciting new cereal sensation, Post Sugar Crisp. Yes, sir, it didn't take folks around the ranch long to discover what a perfect treat Post Sugar Crisp is. That's because it's fun to eat all day long. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. At breakfast time, that deliciously candy-coated puffed wheat tastes so wonderful with milk or cream. You don't need sugar. It's already sweet. At snack time, Post Sugar Crisp is perfect, too, either in a cereal bowl or right out of the package like candy. And what a wholesome treat. Wheat for nourishment. Sugar and honey coated on for flavor. Plus, quick energy. If you haven't tried Post Sugar Crisp yet, tell Mom to order it right away. That's Post Sugar Crisp. In regular or giant size, red, white, and blue packages with the three little bears on the front. The stagecoach sways and bounces as Roy climbs through the window of a door, clings there momentarily to get his balance, then reaches up to the railing on the roof, tests it to see that it will hold his weight. The railing seems strong. Roy begins pulling himself up carefully. Not only because the coach is traveling at great speed, but also because he must not attract the driver's attention. He reaches the top. Maintaining his balance despite the swaying and wind, Roy moves toward the front. Prepared to grab the driver with one hand, the reins with the other. He's almost there. The driver, for some unaccountable reason, turns, sees Roy. He draws a gun, fires. At the same time, Roy lunges. Drop those reins. Drop him. The driver falls from the speeding coach. Roy pulls on the reins. Whoa, whoa, whoa here, boys. Whoa, easy, fellas. Roy, you made it. You made it. Get out of there fast. You and Jonah. Get Andy out, too. Leave Keebler and Wiley where they are. Come on. Why don't we just turn around and drive back? The road's too narrow, and we can't drive into the canyon and turn around because the gang's there. Stand clear, Dale and Jonah. What are you doing, Roy? Sending the coach on ahead so we can be rid of Keebler and Wiley. Go on, get out of here, fellas. Go on there. Whoa, Trigger, you stay here. Well, Keebler and Wiley will meet the gang in the canyon now. They'll tell her we are. Oh, we ain't starting back on foot, I hope. As a retired cavalryman, I protest any such thing. Not right away, Jonah. We're finding a place where we can hold up for a half an hour or so. After that, I'm not quite sure what we'll do. Come on, Trigger boy. Roy, this ain't right. You're risking your lives for... Not another word about it, Andy. I'm old. Won't matter much if they get me. The only thought in wanting to come back was to pay for the bad they've done. 
And if I pay for it this way... Now, Andy, you just follow Roy's advice. Yeah. You trust him. Seems like all my life I've been a trouble to folks. Taking their money, robbing them, and now... Yeah, of course, it's no use of crying. And guess the chance to live only once. It lives wrong, there's no starting over. Hey, oof. cold nights up in these mountains, ain't it, eh? I wish Absorbing Amos was here with us. Jonah, you don't expect us to believe that stuff about Absorbing Amos, do you? <laughs> yeah, you can do as you like, but I wouldn't be with you tonight if it hadn't have been for him. Mm-hmm. How's that? Well, <clears throat> one summer the engines had us outnumbered a hundred to one. <laughs> Most commanders would have given up hope, but not General Thomas Kenneth Rowe. No siree. He used his head. <laughs> Set Amos out in the sun the whole of one day and let him absorb. Oh. I say, let him absorb. And come evening, he shot Amos out of a cannon towards the Indians' camp. Well, sir, the camp burned to the ground. Flames went as high Listen. as the... A gag. Yeah, they're coming back looking for us. You know, I wonder if it would do any good for me to write my stuff down. I'm always interrupting. Hey, Roy, I'll stand out where they'll see me. There's no use in Quiet. It. Nobody move. That was along this stretch that they got out, Jim. Hey, pull up! Well, they can't be far. Roger's horse followed the coach until they all got out. But it's a cinch the four of them couldn't have ridden back to town on one horse. Well, we may have to fan out and search this area, yeah, but... Yeah, but uh, before we do that, why don't we ride up ahead a little? Now, the chances are they went back toward Mineral City on foot. You know, we would need to That's go far... That's just what I was going to suggest. Follow me, men. Keep watch through here. Yeah. You yeah. know, I'm sorry, Wiley, and me fumbled this, Jim, but you know what dealing with Rogers is. Well, we know for sure they're around here somewhere. Easy, Trigger. Steady, fella. Every man in that crowd is from Paradise Valley, Roy. Well, it might be a good idea to write my stuff down at that. If I ain't forgot no, how Kieber's to write. the leader. He and Jim Mitchell. Both of them pretend to be big men in the territory, too. Yeah, pretend, sure. But they've never really fooled anybody. Well, we'll let him ride a little farther. Then with Trigger's help, we'll see if we can get into town, Andy. <laughs> Be careful. They may still be within earshot. I know, but if we wait too long, they'll be coming back, sure. You three stay well hidden. Andy, I'm beginning to wish you'd never broke the law. Trigger, let's go get that stagecoach. Dale and Jonah watch tensely, as does Andy Sales, while the great horse gallops on into the canyon to do Roy's bidding. Without Trigger's help, they could count themselves lost. <laughs> Trigger gallops through the narrow mouth of the canyon into the wider area. There's the stagecoach and its team standing at one side. Trigger calls to them, then turns so that he'll come up alongside. But the team starts away, hauling the stage after them. Roy and Trigger haze them, guiding the stage in a full circle until it turns around and is heading up the narrow road out of the canyon. <laughs> oh, easy here. Steady, steady. Get in the coach, Andy. Roy, I'm just not worth all this. Fast. Every second counts. In with him, Dale and Jonah. I'll climb up on the box. Roy, you're not going to drive. The horses don't know where to go by themselves. Follow us, Trigger. Don't relax in there. We'll probably meet them. If we do, there'll be more trouble than we ever saw before. Come on, boys. Let's go. Ha! Stagecoach leaps ahead. Roy urges the team forward, getting all possible speed from them. Ha! Ha! Yeah! And the coach plunges along the narrow winding road down the side of the mountain. Roy's plan is to reach the turnoff and escape before the gang discovers them. Only in that way can they be sure of taking Andy's sails to safety. But the plan may fail. Riders are coming up the trail directly toward them. Here they come. The gang's heading back this way. We'll shoot our way through like they were wild savages. Well, that's no good. We promised to bring Andy in alive. I'm turning into Serpentine Trail. Roy, that trail goes straight down the mountain. Hang on. The turn's just ahead. We're going to take it. Roy, we're not going to make it. You've got the coach almost turned around. We'll meet ourselves coming back. Ho, ho, ho here. Steady. All right. I've set the brakes. Out of the coach. Quick. Well, why'd you stop? They'll get us now, sure. Roy, let me give myself up. Oh, back up here. Back, back. Loosen the tugs on that side, Jonah. Dale, get to their heads and hold the team. Sure. Get in there. Come on. Hold them, Dale. Tell me when you're ready, Jonah. I want to take the bolt out of the double trees. I'm ready. 
I'll straighten the wheels up and fasten the tongue. We'll let it roll straight down the road on those rattlers. The road's narrow and they can't get out of the way. All right, release the brake. The brake's off, Roy. Let it roll. With the brake released, the coach pulls free of the horses and goes tearing down the side of the mountain toward the oncoming riders, gaining speed with every second. Keebler and Mitchell leading the men see it, but too late. The coach rolling fast crashes. Oh, what a sight. Dale, Jonah, I'm riding on down there to take over. Leave Andy here and come on. Let's go, Trigger. Say, partners, time you got on the trail of a bountiful bowl full of new, improved post toasties, the heap good cornflakes. Sure, shooting those poppin' fresh cornflakes with that wonderful sweet kernel flavor will make you say best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Post toasties, heap good cornflakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good cornflakes, post toasties, heap good cornflakes. Yes, post toasties are so fresh, so crackling crisp, they won't mush up in milk. And you've just got to taste that wonderful corn flavor to believe it. Once your favorite Indians try Post Toasties, Mom, bet you won't have to rope in any members of your tribe for breakfast. They'll come on the gallop next time you call Post Toasties. Post Toasties, heap good corn flakes. The best thing that's happened to corn since the Indians discovered it. Heap good corn flakes, Post Toasties, heap good corn flakes. Mitchell, raise those hands fast. All right, Rogers, all right. Step around in front. You too, Mitchell. A shot cuts through the darkness. An unseen member of the gang off to one side makes an attempt to shoot Roy in the back. Roy stoops low, turns slightly. Another shot, this one cutting through his sleeve. Roy fires his own gun in the direction of his assailant. As he does so, Keebler rushes forward. All right, take him while he's busy, Jim. Keebler throws a punch. Roy stumbles. Before he can recover, Mitchell joins Keebler. In a fierce attack, the others race in, determined to beat Roy down, even kill him. Roy needs help. He needs it fast. Trigger! Come in here, fella! Come on, Trigger! Trigger rears, plunges over the milling outlaws. His front moves, slashing at the men who are endangering Roy. The outlaws fall back, pleading. Stop him! Stop him, Roger! Stop him! Yeah, we've had enough! Hold it, Trigger! Hold it, Trigger! That's enough, boy. All right, now, line up here and raise your hands. Yeah, yeah. Right. If there's any more funny business, I'll take care of the man who does it, pronto. Good work, Trigger. What can we do, Roy? Take their guns while I keep them covered. Jonah, see if you can round up the stagecoach team. Bring them over here, will you? I sure will. You three can ride them, but this gang will have to walk. Oh, you better tell Andy to come on down here, too. We'll be leaving from here. <laughs> Got it all finished, Andy. Yes, sir. A confession three pages long. I see it implicates the men who tried to take you away from us. They were outlaws, same as me years ago. And somehow they had the brass to hold their heads high after the gang broke up. Pretend they were respectable. I didn't. It's time to put you in your cell, Andy. Yes, sir. But before I go, I want to thank you folks. Forget it, Andy. I've been thinking the last couple of hours. If you ever run on to any young fellas who are on the wrong track, try to show them they only got one life to live. And if they live it wrong, there's no way to go back. I never knew that. You better step inside, Andy. Yes, sir. Come on, Roy. All right. Yes, sir. He. Andy reminds me an awful lot of the fellow I was telling you about. Absorbing Amos. Jonah, mm -hmm. I have one more cell. Empty. <laughs> There's a law in this state against lying. I think. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. good. Well, Amos married an Eskimo girl. Iglo Ivy, her name was. <laughs> yes, sir. Everybody thought it'd be a good match, too. Amos could mm. keep her warm, you see. Get ready to grab him, Roy. <laughs> now, Sheriff. <laughs> but Ivy built igloo after igloo out of snow, and Amos just kept melting them down. You're but... wrong, Joe. Huh? 
Amos married a girl named Boiling Bertha. They combined their talents, opened a Turkish bath. They made a fortune. That ain't so. Yes, it is. Well, it ain't either. I made up this story myself, so I ought to do... <laughs> you made it up. That's your confession. You lied. Yes. Uh, no. I... Yeah, no, now wait a minute. Cell. Grab him, Roy. No, now wait a minute. Oh, now, wait. Now. wait a minute, Sheriff. Hold everything. Oh, he's learned his lesson. I'm sure he has. Besides, he's already made a resolution not to tell any more stories. Huh? He's going to write them down. Now, if somebody will just give him a pencil and paper... Maybe we'll have a little peace and quiet around here. Though the sea runs dry And though the sky gives way and stars come tumbling down the lamp of faith will always burn and vanish every care and frown if you times in which we live are dark, the lamp of faith will give you light. When hopes and dreams all fade away, its beams will bring you through the night. When the moon is lost behind the clouds, the lamp of faith will show the way. In its warm glow you'll come to know that there will be a better day. Light the lamp of faith within your heart. The Lord will be your guide. And though you roam so far from home, he'll always travel by. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling until then the Roy Rogers Show is brought to you by Post Serials, each week at this same time, with the Whippoorwills, Forrest Lewis, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production transcribed, directed by Tom Hargis, script by Ray Wilson, music by Milton Charles. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Nestor Piva, Bill Boucher, and Earl Lee. This is Art Ballinger speaking for P.O.S.T. Post cereals. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. Who cares about the clouds if we're together? Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather Happy trails